Hello. Welcome to the next in our series of webcasts on demystifying IFRS 9's impairment requirements. I'm Sandra Thompson. I lead our global accounting technical function for financial instruments. And I'm here today with Gareth Davis. Gareth is a partner in our Amsterdam banking practice and working with some of our clients there on implementing IFRS 9. Today we're going to talk about first transitioning to IFRS 9 for most banks in 2018 and some of the challenges there. I think for me those practical challenges probably fall into two types. The first is actually generating IFRS 9 compliant models and data to use going forwards. And the second is going backwards. When you first adopt IFRS 9, you have to assess whether there's been a significant increase in credit risk since initial recognition of a loan. And to do that, you need credit risk data at initial recognition, so some time before IFRS 9 was adopted, that is IFRS 9 compliant. So Gareth, can you tell us a bit more about those practical challenges and what's involved? As you say, Sandra, um, you need an enormous amount of data to apply IFRS 9. This data uh, includes uh, measures of default risk when loans were first originated. You also need data that enables you to measure default risk at the date that you are doing the calculations. And finally, you need all the data necessary to calculate expected credit losses. And you need this information for every loan on your books, for every portfolio, across all the jurisdictions in which you operate. And of course, banks will have many loans that they wrote maybe 10 years ago, and then digging back in their records to find this information is quite a challenge. Mm -hmm. So assembling all of the necessary data is, is the first challenge. And then of course this data needs to be compliant with the requirements of IFRS 9. And it may well be that a bank has PD information 10 years ago, but the question is, were those PDs calculated in a way that is compliant with IFRS 9? And the chances are that's not the case. So this you would, this data needs to be made IFRS 9 compliant, needs to be adjusted. Um, so there's the data challenge, getting all the right pieces of information, making sure that it's IFRS 9 compliant, and then the next challenge of course is building all the necessary models, calculation engines to crunch all of this data. And this is very, very intense from a calculation perspective. And of course the third challenge once you've done all of this, is to build an appropriate governance and control structure that sits over all of this so that management can, can feel confident that they understand the movements from one month to another uh, as the calculations are run. So that really does sound like a pretty significant challenge. Now often accounting standards come with transitional provisions or if you like approximations or help for entities when they first apply. Is there anything in IFRS 9? Well, there is um, a, a, an allowance, if you like, that, that says that when you measure default risk upon origination at the transition stage, these, these measures should approximate okay. default risk. So the word approximate does, of, of course, give some latitude in, in this matter. But if you are unable to do that, then, of course, the asset automatically falls into stage two, which means that you carry a lifetime loss for the entire life of the asset on, on, on the bank's books. Um, of course, if the, if the assets are heavily collateralized, this may not be so problematic because then the lifetime loss would not be so large. But, of course, you then have a lot of loans in stage two, which is not necessarily so attractive. Okay, thank you. And this may be a hard question to answer, but in terms of your practical experience, how long could a bank expect to, to have to do this? Well, most of the projects I'm involved with have been running now for at least the last uh, 18 months or so. Mm. So I think it's certainly a, a two-year endeavour um, and certainly involves quite a large number of FTEs, people from risk, from modelling, from accounting, often including teams of perhaps 20 odd people working to, to implement IFRS 9. Okay, thank you. So it really is a significant task, a yes. significant challenge, and I guess our message is, to the extent you're not already doing so, please do think about doing this sooner rather than later. So just to recap, when you transition to IFRS 9 for the first time, there are significant challenges in having the models and the data you'll need that's in an IFRS 9 compliant form. As Gareth has said, on transition, you can approximate the credit risk at, at initial recognition. However, if you're unable to do that, then the standard says the loan falls into stage two and stays there for the whole of its life, which is not a result most bank wants. One final point to bear in mind is disclosure. So there are some significant disclosure requirements that need to be given on transition. 
basically bridging between the IS39 numbers and the new IFRS 9 ones. And do remember those and make sure you're collecting the data necessarily to comply with them. Thank you very much for listening today. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast and hope you'll join us next time. If you'd like to subscribe for the whole series, please click on the button at the bottom of your screen. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.